So this is a resin moulding made by Stapledon Productions of the Star Trek medical tricorder and it's the uh, it could be in the IX, X or XI versions and it's medical because it has the hand scanner that clips into the bottom here. So the first job is to separate all these parts and just give it a good examination, check the mouldings out. Now here for example, if I put a piece of white card you can see that one of the holes up here is still blocked but apart from that it looks pretty good so I'll trim that Okay, this, uh, this door it has a hole through here for wires, that's blocked. And there's a hole here for the LED, that's blocked. So I'll be drilling that out as well. The rest looks pretty good. Uh, these hinges are going to have to come off. The reason for that is uh, the battery will be in this part and I'll be providing power to the door via the hinges so I'll be making one side of the hinge positive the other side negative left and right hinges and that will feed through into here so I have to take these off and drill holes so I can run the wires in between where these screws are just checking the holes over uh, and this piece, it's actually got a screw missing, I don't know what I'll be doing about that. But it comes away from the frame, because the frame actually gets glued in there. So I'll be taking this off as well and putting these screws away so I don't lose them. So that's all part of the body prep. As you can see here, there's a bit of a tag. Again, I've got a white card, it tends to show it in that corner here that will need trimming out so I've uh, cleared these holes out and trimmed them out, trimmed that corner out so that's looking pretty good now with this piece I'm going to have to put a drill bit right the way through there so it comes through this channel and through here. Don't know if I'm going to be able to get this on the film or not. Gone through there. That's a bit smaller, but that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. The secret here is not to damage any of this. Now I've got to drill through that, go through that hole now and drill this back one out. Now it's quite difficult doing it on camera. So just bear with me. Right, that's just through. I didn't want to push that any further because this piece of the drill, if it touches here, it's going to damage it because it's very thin there. You can see the light shining through it. That's quite good. We'll try again. This time I should be able to go all the way through. Just by moving the drill around uh, slightly, I've opened up those holes to the full size. So I'll be able to get my LED up through into here, and there's plenty of room. Just need to tidy it up a bit. 
well, there's plenty of room to run the cable. I'm just going to take these two hinges off. Okay, so I've just put a hole here and a hole here. These are the two holes were for the screws. And they go right the way through. And what I haven't done yet is I have to countersink this so the solder from the wire that's on the hinge doesn't make it rock or bulge out. It has to sit flush on here. Now I'm not going to do that until I know how much I've got to do it by. And that's once I've finished doing the soldering of the wires, which will come a bit later in the build. So that's basically body prepped. Right, well, having just drilled these holes for the electric wires to go through, I noticed on this side that they uh, come halfway through this ridge. Now this ridge is where the emergency beacon sits. So that actually sits down like that and rests on the ridge. Uh, this holds okay. I cut some pretty thick wire and it still goes in pretty okay. But this one won't go in. It buffs up against this. What I'm going to have to do is dremel it down lower so the wire comes in at an angle on this one. So I've just enlarged this hole considerably and the one here and that's so I can get this blue LED where it needs to go through that hole and through into there and that will come back. So this sits round about here when I'm happy it's in the right place I will use some hot glue to hold it and of course the right place is immediately underneath this hole and then when that's in place I can reposition this LED so it's pointing in the right direction. At the moment it's pointing down. And I'll tuck that back a bit further, sort of like that, and walk back in here. Something like that, because it'll have a cover on so you get your blue shining through. I'm going to get your red over here. So just playing with the things, getting a feel for it. Uh, the way I can position this LED, yeah, it's quite simple really. So let's take that out. And actually position it where it goes. And then I'm just going to, I could either spray it with a bit of um, undercoat or if you've got a marker you can mark it and just cross like that. Pop this out and X marks the spot. I won't set it in now, but to show you how I'd now do that is there. That's where that board's got to go. You can see the cross here, and I just move the LED 
by positioning it there, a bit of hot glue to hold it in place. I know that LED will be above the hole for the emerge light. With that in place I can then thread this through the holes so it sits with the ID. Now the wire I was using here is far too thick. I've just been looking at the thin wires here on the circuit and uh, I've actually got some of that wire and it is much much thinner than the big chunky stuff I was using. So I can coil that up in there and it's free to move. Does it get trapped? So I know these holes are the right size now for the blue LED. I've marked here where the red LED goes. Just got to solder the hinges and put them back on.